be over the news what's happening in our southern border and our southern border territory. Uh, large numbers of people, and in many cases we have no idea who they are, and in many cases they're not good people. We're doing very well on the southern border. We're very tough. We get a lot of bad court decisions from the Ninth Circuit, which has become a, a big thorn in our side. We always lose, and then you lose again and again, and then you hopefully win at the Supreme Court, which we've done. But uh, it's a terrible thing when judges take over your protective services. What's going on in the region? How are they feeling about things? How are they feeling about trade? Because, you know, trade for me is a very big subject all over. We've been taken advantage of for many, many years by bad trade deals. We don't have any good trade deals. How are you finding things in the region, Nick? Uh, Mr. President, uh, from our perspective out on the water, sir, um, we're seeing that there is an abundance of trade happening in the region. Um, there are vessels moving moving through the Straits of Hormuz and across the Arabian Gulf on a daily basis, uh, carrying cargo to and fro. Um, and we don't see any issues in, in in terms of trade right now, sir. Okay. okay. Well, you'll keep it that way. And, you know, we want to have good free trade. And we also want to have fair deals where we can do well. Uh, Sam Vinograd, it sounded as if the president was reading his tweets uh, to the troops here, uh, but I, I guess he was reassured that maritime trade is is in good shape right now across the world. What what do you make of all that? Well, Jim, it's pretty clear at this point that we have a Pavlovian president. He cannot miss a public opportunity to list his accomplishments and to go through his greatest hits. And at this point, his greatest hits are to talk about trade and to really focus on the supposed other. And in this case, it was the Ninth Circuit or judges that he thinks don't vote with him. But I think part of the reason why he spent so much time going through his personal report card on this phone call is he just doesn't have a lot else to say to the troops right now, particularly when you look at the southern border, the troops that have been deployed, that's a political mission. It's not a mission actually driven by a need. And so he was filling airtime by going through what he likes to talk about because there isn't a whole lot of other substance there. And so when you're up on Capitol Hill, you know Republicans are uncomfortable with the fact that the president hasn't visited troops in a combat zone and that he has troops stationed on the border with Mexico for, for reasons that a lot of people think is just hogwash. Uh, they, I mean, I would imagine that that video right there is just going to make them more uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, it made everyone uncomfortable watching that video. And I, I was thinking as I was watching him on that phone call just how the troops felt on the other end. This is a, you know, a call that they look forward to. They certainly would like a visit. And, you know, the president is getting political and asking them about trade. That's not in a position that they want to be in. That's certainly not a position Republicans on the Hill want to defend when asked, why has the president not to have been to a war zone? Why can't he handle just a simple Thanksgiving call with troops? It, uh, again, just highlights his inability to kind of really own that position um, behind that resolute desk. And, and just with the little bit of time we have left on uh, FBI Director Jim Comey uh, being subpoenaed uh, for a closed door hearing, he's obviously balking at that and saying he doesn't want to do that. Uh, wh what do you what do you make of that, uh, Laura? Why do you think this is happening now? I mean, I can't imagine this is going to happen. And then January comes and the Democrats are going to take over. Anyway. Yeah. Now this is their last gas to try to go after this idea of DOJ FBI impropriety during the 2016 election, the lead up to the Russia investigation. They've been at this for a long time. It's a last ditch effort. When the House takes over by the Democrats come January, this is going nowhere. Uh, it appears Comey's ready to fight it in court. We're not sure what Lynch is going to do yet. But by the time it goes through the court process, Jerry Nadler will be the head of the Judiciary Committee, not Bob Goodlatte. And, and Michael, uh, Jim Comey has said that he is concerned about selective leaking coming out of uh, a closed-door proceeding if he goes and speaks with these, well, these lawmakers. Exactly. And throughout this entire Russia investigation, the thing that has upset me most is that all of these hearings, or the predominant number of these hearings, have been behind closed doors. I would have much preferred... No open hearings throughout this whole thing. That's right. I would have much preferred Watergate and Sam Nunn and open hearings so we could get a sense ourselves of who's telling the truth and who's not, and then we can make a decision. Here, this closed door, selective leaking, Comey's right. It's just not democratic. And it sounds like we might be getting some open hearings coming soon. Uh, we'll see if... Uh... Some of these witnesses cooperate. All right. Be careful what we wish for. Exactly. All right. Thank you, all of you, uh, and happy, happy holidays. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back with more news in just a minute.